So georeferencing, uh, you can use a laser pointer of the X7 to locate points for perspective precision point measurement. And you can also import coordinates uh, from a survey uh, control file or input the coordinates manually. And then can pair the points together or automatically uh, thanks to a perspective. HDR, uh, so it speaks by itself, but uh, Jason will show, show that to all of us. So always important if you um, plan to take photo in very, not difficult, but uh, a bit not, a bit difficult environment, like very bright or very dark. And then LED on off options. So it seems to be basic, but we have some requests from customers. So that's why we always keep in touch with our customers and, <laughs> and listen to them. So we have some people doing like railway project and they said those uh, blinking lights are kind of dangerous if you like railway project because of the, for safety reason. Also to with some people doing a survey into supermarket or train station. So, you know, if you have a scanner with blinking or making noise, people will come and see what he's doing and what are you doing and so on. So the good thing with the X7 is very silent. It makes no noise, so at least people are not attracted by the noise. And then by the LED, we can uh, <clears throat> put them off, so you're like uh, uh, by yourself, and you can do your job uh, nicely and uh, quietly as well. Uh, increased tilt range, or so tilt range has been increased from plus minus five degrees to plus minus 10 degrees for survey grade accuracy of three arc seconds for upright and upside down scan. So you can put it like this and still have a a survey grade accuracy of three arc seconds. LED leveling guide on off option. So if you're not a surveyor, if you want to know, uh, even if you're a surveyor, and if you plan to tilt it, if you want still to know if it's between plus minus 10 degrees, it's difficult sometimes to uh, to know which leg to adjust if you're not familiar with, uh, with this. So we put some light at the base of the X7, and if it's red or blue, it will let you know if you have to go up or down. So a nice visual help to help you level your scanner. And then we get also some new diagnostic report and a peak calibration report that I mentioned before. So very important if you want to uh, certify to your client that your instrument will perform according to specifications. You can do that and run uh, those reports in a matter of a few seconds and so uh, always very uh, beneficial. And then finally, we made some processing and project management uh, improvement. So I think I took more than enough and uh, now Jason uh, will take us through a live demonstration of Trimble Perspective. Uh, Jason, it's to you. Thank you. All right, great. Thanks very much, Arno. That was a, a great introduction. Uh, so what I'd like to do is just run you through a bit of using the X7 with Perspective on the, on the tablet. I would normally be running it on the tablet, but for the presentation today so that I could be connected to a webcam and the internet and the scanner all at one time. I'm just going to run perspective from my laptop. So I've just finished a scan, so I'm going to share my screen. All right. That's the international way of looking for a button, moving your head close to the uh, webcam. Okay, so hopefully everybody can see my screen now. This is a scan that I just did uh, while Arnaud was talking. And I'm just going to hide. Some yes, we, we can see Jason, just to confirm. Great. All right. Thank you. Uh, so here you see on the screen the scan that we just did. And I'm just going to turn on the images. This is using the HDR that Arno mentioned so that I could get uh, these kind of dark areas back here, uh, but not get too blown out on the, on the bright areas. And I've just turned on the laser pointer. So I don't probably can't see it on the webcam, uh, but it's shining on the wall behind me. And we're going to use this laser pointer and just to position it on the target so we can use this for georeferencing. Just going to zoom in a little bit closer. Now you see when you zoom in really close within uh, just a couple of centimeters, the screen becomes pixelated, so it's difficult to see. That's where I use the laser pointer then, uh, just tapping on this reticule so I can see it a little bit better. And then I'm just looking to make sure that I'm on the center of that target. And of course, if I was using the tablet, I would be walking over and taking a, with the tablet, I would go over, make sure that I am in fact centered correctly. I would take a quick uh, image to go with my annotation. So you can see here on the screen, I'm just going to choose precision point. It's in addition to our annotations that we've had in the past. And then I'm just going to 
uh, click scan point. And again, if I had the tablet, I would take a photo of it uh, so you could see the target that I'm pointing at. Now, this precision point, it's going to be a little bit more accurate than just picking a single point out of the point cloud. Um, it's not exactly uh, going to be the, the same quality as a high-end total station, but better than just an individual point. So very quickly now, I've just captured that point, and then I'm just going to give it a name, and I'm going to click this tick box to use this for georeferencing. As Arno mentioned, now I have the capability to go in and do georeferencing with this release. So I'm going to click Create Point, and Close Out. So there we can see uh, the control points that have been captured here. If I was to look at this in a 3D view, now we can see the scan here that we've done in this individual uh, room in the basement here. I can also see where our control points are located. So the next thing that we're going to do, just going to close out of that, is I'm going to go and do a georeferencing for this project. So from the main menu, I'm just going to choose georeference project. It's just letting me know that I don't have any control points. So I'm going to click on import, browse to some control points. I've got the options to choose how I want to import these. This looks good, more than elevation, comma, survey feet, and then click import. As soon as they're imported, the software is going to attempt to match them and then give us residuals. If those residuals go by too fast, you can always click on the notifications to look at those. So those numbers look really good. You can also see the results over here, which points have been paired with each. So in this case, uh, it was control point 100. I paired it with point 100. And if for some reason the control was out maybe a, a couple of centimeters so that the software wouldn't automatically match it, you can always go up here and manually select which points you want to pair up and run the application or the matching that way. So once it's georeferenced, then I'm going to click apply. We'll apply that georeference and then close the tool. Now, that coordinate system and I'm ready to move to a new station to do another scan so again there's the the 3d view very quickly and here's the station based view that we are looking at with the targets here and here's just the, the point cloud with In a certain range, uh, the compensator will kick in and apply the leveling force. So you can see here that I think I have, in fact, exceeded that range. So it's flashing, letting me know uh, that this side is low. The blue lights, if you can see those on the left hand, if this was to be the high side, then you would also, I'd want to get really tilted. You'll see now that this is the high side. So it has a huge range on that compensator you can see that right about here is just about the limit so you've got a lot of bit of play so here all the lights are green all the way around it lets me know that i'm within that range that the survey grade uh, compensator will kick in but because i'm surveying it drives me nuts so i am just going to level it up and now I'm ready to start a new scan now normally I would move probably a little bit farther away so I can see a little bit more detail by having the 3d view on the screen I can in fact see where all the shadows are so it would let me know exactly where I need to move the scanner to in order to to capture everything that I want then I'm going to set my scan parameters so just going to set the normal time uh, and you can see that a normal scan is going to be about a minute and a half inside these close areas like this. If I was outside capturing uh, objects far away, I might want to do one of the longer scans. But in this case, I'll have quite a few scans uh, to capture all of this. I have the, and you can see the scan will take about a minute and a half. You can see the spacing and the points. If I turn on the images, 
uh, you'll see that it's going to add time. It's going to add about a minute, so two and a half minutes to do the scan. And if I was to do HDR, it'll add a little bit more time there. So you can always see the times that you're going to get uh, for the sake of just going through the demo quickly. I'm going to turn the images off and keep this at a minute and a half for the scan. Now, while it's uh, getting ready to scan, you'll see that it's turned to an initialization phase. What it's doing is it'll always go through before each scan and check the calibration of the instrument uh, to make sure that you're going to get uh, within uh, the specs on the data sheet. If the calibration isn't good, and it's then going to go apply a new calibration uh, to use going forward. So you're always making sure that your scanner is going to give you the data that you expect from the data sheet. Now, while it's doing that, uh, I will also mention a little bit more about the scanner. So uh, it's weighing in at about 5.8 kilograms, only about 12 pounds. So you can imagine it's just barely more than a gallon of milk. So it's very light, easy to move around as you see here. Also, you can put it in a lightweight travel bag, which you can fit in the overhead bin of most major airlines. Now, that's a good part with the calibration. If, say somebody opens that overhead bin and your, your scanner falls out in the middle of the flight, it always gives you that peace of mind knowing that it does that calibration check before the beginning of each scan. Now, as Arno mentioned, the temperature range is minus 20 to uh, plus 50 C, which gives you a lot of, of range where you can use it up north in areas like Canada or in the Middle East where Arno was at as well, and also got that great IP55 um, environmental protection rating. Uh, so again, uh, you can see in this renovation site, it's quite dusty. There was a lot of dust in the room yesterday uh, as work was going on, so we're not having to worry about dust or outside in the light rain either. So you see the scan went by very quickly. The progress is showing up down here at the bottom of the screen. Once the scan is uh, fully complete, then it's going to go through and download that information into the perspective software. So check over here. Uh, it gives me an audible beat. I can also see that the lights are green. That lets me know that it's ready to move to the next station. The scan's downloaded. It's loading the points. So if I was to just look at this from the top, you see there's the scan. It's not quite aligned, but you see in the upper right, it's doing the auto registration to match these two scans up. Now, this would be happening while I'm walking to the next station position. You can see the results of the registration there. You can also quickly go and see the, uh, the results in the notifications here. You can kind of see everything that's happened on here. So that looks pretty good. I can turn it into 3D to look at that a little bit more. Now, another useful tool I'm just going to go to the top view is uh, this cutting plane. So I can quickly create a slice through the scan, just or, or the scans, just to look and see how they're matching up on these edges. Uh, it's also nice to use in combination, say, with the measurement tool. For example, if I wanted to quickly get an area, somebody wanted to know, I can measure around this room. Uh, say you're trying to figure it out for uh, placement of concrete or something, we can quickly see that the square footage is about 480 square feet on this room. So you can do these measurements here in the field, uh, rough measurements, or you can do them back in the office. If I wanted to go and look, I'm just going to uh, turn this off. If I wanted to look in a station-based view, I can also check the elevation uh, or the uh, vertical. So if I was to check here from one of these beams and click down here on the floor, I can see that it is about seven and a half feet. Uh, if I wanted to check, I could also go and take a paint measure and see that there's seven, I'm in fact seven and a half feet. So you can get really good quick measurements right in the field. Using the system, I can save these uh, measurements if I want, or I can just delete them as well. Arnell mentioned some of the new reports that we can create. So I mentioned the scenario, maybe you've got your scanner in the overhead bin or in the back of a truck and you're driving down a bumpy road for hours to get to a site. 
from the settings, you can now go in and go to scanner settings and you'll see these reports that you can generate. Here's a diagnostic report. If I run that, it takes about uh, two minutes to run. I'll just show you what it looks like here. You can save these reports as a PDF. So you can quickly look through, making sure that all of the in, uh, mechanical components inside the system are passing, so you know your scanner's good. Uh, when you run the port report, if something uh, you, you didn't like was there, you also have the ability to save a report for the support team, which you can send to them to diagnose. Uh, here also is that field calibration report. Again, this takes, uh, this takes less than a minute to run through. And it's just going to go through and validate that everything is uh, meeting the specifications on the instrument. And again, you can save these as a PDF, as I'm showing you here, which you can provide uh, to anybody that may need these. This could be important for forensics or certain job sites. You need to have these uh, to get on there. Uh, again, you don't have to run the report before each scan. The scanner is doing a check on its own making sure that everything is it's good it's checking the diagnostics it's checking the calibration and if for any reason the lights will flash red if it's failing anything letting you know that you can't scan uh, but you can generate these reports if you need to so i think that was the bulk of what i wanted to show you here uh, i showed you the registration at the end you can go through and refine your registration it's going to tighten up and create cross ties between all of the scans in the project. So you can see there, I've run through, created a registration report. It's letting me know, in this case, I only had two stations. Uh, there's one registration set. It's going to give me an overall uh, registration error. And then I can see all of the details for the connections. And it's going to color code this based on how good the registration uh, looks. So I think that's it for the uh, demo. So with that, we'll open it up to any questions that you may I have. Just have one more slide to present, Jason, but thanks. It was a very informative and very good demonstration. Thank you. All right. There is some snow outside, no? Looks through the window.